Hey, what's up, guys? Somebody asked me how come this model that he has uh, doesn't seem to show him any attachment effects like spell effects and these other things. So what we're gonna do is uh, we are gonna go ahead and open Warcraft models, and we're gonna try to get this guy ready for him. We're gonna put that right there, and uh, here's the portrait model. Great. So I don't know what this thing looks like. I haven't ever looked at it, but I'm guessing that we'll be able to fix it. Here we go. Here's this thing. That looks. This is a pretty nice little model, right? Let's see what it looks like in here. Uh, this rendering system doesn't show particle emitters, so for all we know, it might have particle emitters. Don't know. Uh, but uh, we're loading our we're loading our data from patch. Oh, we're, we're not loading patch 130. So this is the new version where if I load patch 126, it works great. Uh, if I load patch 130. Uh, it should still work great, but now we have all the different team colors, right? We can make them like lavender team color because you know that matters. All right, great. So, um, looks like things are working, and now what we want to do is we want to figure out well, why does this model have no attachments? So I think what that gets down to is the question of the nodes, how it's built. Uh, clearly it has a sound that's probably death. Uh, I need to add a mechanism that would tell us actually what sound that is. Uh, I've not added that mechanism, which is in Magos, but it's not in my program. So. We'll have to add that at some point. I don't know if it's like mouse over it or what. Uh, have it tell you that information. But as we can see, this model has no attachment points. Nothing informing the game how to attach stuff to it. Uh, it also seems to lack collision shapes. So I would hazard a guess, and we could try to make sure here, uh, if I make a new custom map and I put this model on the map, I think you might also have trouble clicking on it in game. I guess at some point, maybe some of those bugs in the game were fixed. But let's just give this a quick test here. Um, so this is going to be our quick model test map. Let's see, maps, quick model test. We're going to set that right up, and then we're going to put our guy in there. And this needs to be a frozen throne map. So let's copy the warden, because it looks like a hero. Great. I uh, just wanted a frozen throne unit, so it registers frozen throne. Awesome, now we have this custom model, so my question to you is, can we click this guy in game? The editor uses bounds radius information that generally every model will have. Um, the frozen, or the, not frozen, sorry, the in-game environment that we see might not be the same. Uh, so I'm a little bit curious, can we click this guy? It looks like we can. That's actually, it's kind of interesting, all right. Uh, but you can also you also notice you can you can click on the hero glow. I'm not totally sure that's normal. Uh, it, is. it probably is. Uh, let's see about that. I'm gonna get a paladin. We'll see if you can click the paladin's hero glow to select him. Generally, I thought the practice was to try to make it that you could only uh, click on the model itself. But we'll take a look at the paladin. So what do we got here? So when I look at the paladin, I note that there is a little bit of area around him, but no, I don't think it's all the hero glow. It's just just a little part of it. Uh, this guy has a pretty large area, but I guess it's still still kind of working. There's definitely a lot a lot of area out here that's clickable on that. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I can say I have sound turned off so his mouth Let doesn't move. Cool. So <clears throat> we got that. So it looks like we do have a clickability set up. Which I'm actually kind of curious about because I always tell people you just have to have collision shapes in order for that stuff to work correctly. And this guy doesn't have any collision shapes, so he's clearly inheriting that information from uh, probably the bound radius information. So I don't really have any good code to interact with that in my program, but we can do spell attachments. And that, I'm sure, does the warden have any. For example, if we get a devotion aura, he's not going to show the devotion aura under him, right? And the reason for that, devotion aura attaches to the origin attachment. So we just need like a vaguely similar shape creature. Um, these bones have good names. We could probably import from anything that's a roughly similar shape. I mean, let's go with like Torrin Chieftain maybe. Uh, I was just thinking like a big burly guy. Or uh, you know what might be even actually closer would be to get the Beastmaster. Let's try that. Let's get the Beastmaster. So uh, what you do for that, right, is you just leave out. You don't need anything except specifically the attachments. Uh, you'll notice this model also doesn't have any footprints or any of these other things as they sometimes add, the little like water ripple foot effects. Uh, but we probably don't care about that. 
I guess maybe we don't need the collision shape. It looks like there's a workaround that they've got in this model for that. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to do the attachment points today. And for those, uh, generally, it looks like they don't have any visibility information. They're just always visible in this case. And that's probably fine. So we're, we're going to want to import them. But So the key here is going to be you want to line them up. So like foot left ref, right? It's a reference point on the model. And in a moment, we'll be able to choose where on the model it is. That says, where do you attach something that's linked to the unit's left foot? So uh, to answer that question, we need to know where it is. And we need to know what point of motion in the character do we link it to, right? Because you could conceivably link something to his foot and then have the model walk, start walking and it's in the place of his foot at the starting point, but it doesn't move with his foot. So what we do here is we're going to make it move with his foot. So we'll say foot left moves with the left foot, foot right moves with the right foot. Uh, the weapon, I, mean, I think this guy's weapon is like his right hand fist, right? Like if we look at the attack animation. Uh, sorry, that was the walk animation. The attack animation, yeah, it's like the right fist. Uh, even attack slam looks like it. Oh, okay. These are uh, these are the animations of the sea giant. So actually, if we want to make this even easier on ourselves, we could probably import from the sea giant. But actually, it doesn't really matter um, how you do that. So what well, we can keep going. Uh, if you were going to do this, you probably want to import from the sea giant because it looks like he's a sea giant. But uh, let's keep going. So weapon right, I'm going to put on the right hand. Uh, same with hand right. Head is pretty easy. You just link that to the head. Uh, weapon left, I guess, goes left hand. Okay, so this guy's already got weapon R and L. Most most models just have one weapon. That's actually I'm curious about that. Looks like it shouldn't matter though. This is a Blizzard model. We're taking it out of right. It's a Beastmaster, so probably valid. Uh, left hand, we'll stick on the left hand there. Chest node, we'll stick on the chest node of our guy. Origin is supposed to not move, and overhead is you know like an overhead buff. Those don't move with animations. So uh, both of those, we don't have to click anything. And we should be good to just click Finish. Now the key you'll see here is that when it adds them in, it's still using the Beastmaster uh, locations on most of those. So, for example, overhead, I'm going to hit the W key to go to translation. Overhead should be higher, right? You look at this guy, and uh, he's pretty tall, so like, you know, you know overhead would be one of them. I have it like up there. Uh, all his foot and these other ones, uh, That this one I think being origin probably... Should be right. This one, yeah, that, that, that one there. It turns green when I mouse over it, right? So origin's turning green. Uh, so that's the origin point. The rest of these uh, we want to manipulate while we have him visible. So we can just say that the hands are with the hand, the head is with the head, and all of that is nice and dandy. And then we need to put it back in the game and give him an orb of fire, give him these other things that aren't going to work correctly here, but will once we add that stuff. Um, Great, so that's looking pretty good from the front. From here, it doesn't look as good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this forward a bit. Foot is probably about right. Uh, these these hand weapons, actually, I, I would almost say could even be lower. Uh, so put them with the hands. But notably, these things, which are like the weapon weapons, should probably just be between there. So leave that there. This, I think, is the body, the chest, and this is the head. So that chest point is used by like some immolation. So we want to have this character now. We'll test it in-game with immolation. We'll test it in-game with an orb of fire. And we'll test it in-game with roar, so you can see that over his head. Uh, and we'll test it in-game with an aura. So that's a good four tests. Uh, we should be able to see that these things are working as we intend. We're going to call this underscore attachments. Great. So let's do that. Uh, whoop, don't look at that. Sorry, didn't mean to open that. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, let's do that. We're going to go to models. We're going to go to the crest folder. We're going to grab the version of this guy with attachments. And we could probably rename the portrait because now we're using the underscore attachments version. And the portrait needs to have the same, uh, same path to be loaded. So we can't save the map because I can still have it open. It's not so good, uh, but let's let's put in an orb of fire. Let's put in a druid to give us a roar. And what was the other one we said? We got we got we're gonna have a paladin for an aura. I might give us a paladin, save us some time. How do I not know where the orb of fire is? Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm on camera. I'm not thinking about how the orb of fire is right here, which is the same place it's been for 15 years. All right, uh, let's see. We'll get ourselves a paladin who's gonna already be leveled up in Devotion Aura. 
But I guess we want to have it, maybe we'll see it as he walks up. We'll be able to see that effect. Uh, we want to be able to see immolation. So let's give him Cloak of Flames. You know, we want to have access to that Cloak of Flames. So we'll get ourselves that and we'll put that down here. And we're also going to give him, uh, is there anything else that would show up on his hands? I really think immolation, there's different There's different kinds of immolation. Let's make one of them that has permanent immolation neutral hostile too, because as, a, as a, years ago and time has gone by, it's always shown me time and time again that permanent immolation neutral hostile too uses the chest reference when some of the other ones don't, I think. So that, that way we'll be really sure uh, that that is correct. And then this is where we need to, oh, I need to know which one is it. Immolated. Great, this is the immolated one. Okay, cool. So this guy, at the start of the game, is going to have immolation. And then we're going to give us a, uh, a druid of the claw who's going to have roar that he can use so that we can see the roar effect over his head, which should also be in there, hopefully. Great, so let's give that a run, and we'll see, did we get our attachments linked onto there the way we want? Uh, so the first thing I see is that I don't see immolation on this guy. So that is not a good sign. That's very much not a good sign. Uh, I think probably the reason for that is that this is very simple uh, object editor. Here we go. Very simple problem, easy to fix. I forgot to change the model path to the new one, right? You import a new copy of the model, you got to use the new copy of the model. Oh, it's very straightforward. So we'll do that. We'll start the game again. Now we should see it. Now it should be how we want. And let's give it a shot. Okay. The model did not load. Uh, sometimes that's probably just due to some bug. Of, when I, I think when I saved and it said cannot save map, that happens, so we just reload it there. Uh, that'll fix that. Great, here we go. So now as you can see, this guy actually has permanent immolation on his, like, on his front, on his chest bone, that they call it, you know. Uh, this guy can pick up a Cloak of Flames. Curiously enough, this, this Cloak of Flames, this is why I want to test this. This one attaches to a different point. Uh, which is why it's a little bit up there. Uh, you can see he's got the aura when he gets near the paladin, so we definitely have the, the aura reference showing there. Now we want to test his roar. Can we see the roar over his head? Uh, because that is, of course, the last uh, point that we added while we were importing things. And it looks like we can. Uh, so this should give us pretty much everything we want. It looks like I got the portrait path wrong again, but that's easy to fix, right? You just go in there and you make sure the two file names line up. Uh, so yeah. There you have it. And that is how you take a model, then you do an import function, you bring the attachment points on, and now you can see everything. Uh, I guess the one last one I didn't test is the orb of fire. So we see I picked that up, and you can see it's orbiting his fist down there. Now it is, it's a little small, I would say. Uh, so you know, it's always up to, up to you as the developer where you want to put that, or if you want to try to, uh, if you want to try to scale that attachment point up. I think we could do it actually if we said we want our orb of fire to be a little bit bigger. What we need to do is this weapon, uh, see, attachment weapon R. Let me unselect weapon R. Yeah, this guy. So this guy's attachment weapon R. So I almost want to say, and let's hope I'm not crazy with this, that if I create a global sequence of length 1,000 that doesn't do anything, and I go in there and I say that this guy is going to be scaled way up, and I just click a few times, that might make the orb of fire really big. I'm actually not sure. So we're going to give that a try here. I'm just curious if that makes the Orb of Fire pretty big. So let's let's put that in the game. This is a curiosity of my scale function. Can we can we do a scaling on this thing? Um, that might not work. It did work. So there you go. So obviously that's really confusing. You can't see that in my software that that worked. And this only is going to work in the newer version of the Matrix Theater that I didn't publish yet, the newer version of my software. But as you can see, I scaled up the attachment point, which doesn't visually change size in my editor. And this that's sort of that's my fault of not uh, making it show. But what I did is there's this global sequence, which means it's just applying a constant animation. It's not really animating, but it's so that we don't have to change it for each animation or something like that. Uh, I'm giving it a constant animation that the Orb of Fire is always scaled up. So... As we can see, I made it too large. We could say to make it like a third that size. We'll save this. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll save that here. And we could try it again. Uh, I'm also curious why the portrait didn't work. But 
you know. I wonder if it's like the underscore. I'm not allowed to have the underscore. Do, 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 do. Attachments underscore portrait. I mean, it looks good to me. I don't know. There's something, maybe something going on there. So we do that. I change the model path. So that means we got to change it in here. Uh, great. And then because we did that that scaling trick, uh, it should be the same, but the orbifier is going to be closer to its same size, closer to really what you would want it to be, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so look at this guy, right? Now he's got an orbifier that uh, is maybe still a little slightly too big, but it's generally pretty good. Uh, you, you know when you see that that this guy's got an orbifier on it. And you could do that to any attachment point, but you could do that same global sequence trick uh, once I publish the next version of my software, which is just the idea that I'm editing it as an animation, right? So I'm not... There's not a concept of size in a attachment point, but there is a concept of the, the scaling animation. You can say, well, scale it to be larger. Um, and so I just need to make a way for you to see how much it's scaled to, right? You can you can kind of right-click this scaling frame, and you could, like, delete it or copy it or whatever, but it doesn't show how much it's scaled, which is inconvenient. So Maybe I'll put that in later. Uh, but yeah, that's an example. Hopefully it helps you of uh, how to add effect attachments to a model so that spell effects will show. Hope you have a good day.